Hi beloved, I'm back again. This is my second video on holiness and the discriminations that I usually give, I'll tell it once again. This video is for like-minded Christians only, Christians who want to learn about holiness, are on the way of holiness, want to pursue holiness, um, want to grow deeper in their relationship with Jesus in the path of holiness and righteousness. This video is only for them. So uh, for others, they will find it uh, useless. So if you are somebody who believes that the salvation after salvation and after baptism, the job is done and we have nothing else to do, uh, then this video is not for you. The second, the second disclaimer I would like to give is about my job. This video is related to my faith and religion and has nothing to do with the job. And the third is about children. Only um, anybody can watch it. Anybody can watch it as young as uh, two, three, four, you name it. We want our children to grow up in holiness as well. So I'll continue from where I stopped last time. I said my journey in India and I came to the U.S. at the age of... Uh, something like 25, 26. I was very young. Uh, I was immature and I was excited. I did not know what will this country bring. And this country is the land of the free. I mean, land of the free. They have liberty. They have freedom in every form and fashion you can imagine. And if you are not careful, you are going to fall into that trap, which I very subtly, very subtly started falling. Um, this was a country where I first heard the word beautiful being called. Somebody called me beautiful and I was like, the moment they said I was beautiful, it was like light bulbs went whoosh. And I was like, what, did somebody just think I was cute? I mean, that really made an impact. From ugly to pretty, that makes a difference in a woman's life. So, you know, I said, mm, maybe I am cute. Words have power. You should not let anybody tell you the opposite. Only believe the word of God, what God says. You know, one of my non-Christian friends, she was, uh, actually she was from, she was Asian too. And she said to me, Sue, you know, let's go and let's buy you some stuff to make you pretty. And I said, yeah, what does this place have? And I went with her and she was the first one to buy me a mascara. So I said, oh, I mean, I don't use it, but she said, oh, you just try it with those brown eyes you have. Oh my gosh, they look awesome. I said, maybe, you know, so she brought me some mascaras and from there, never stopped. Went into eyeliner, eyeshadow, eye pencil, you name it, I had it. Um, but I was very careful using my makeup in moderation in the beginning. You know, when I started, especially nurses, you don't want to overdo it because patients are always, you know, in pain and you don't want to go there like a... You know you're overdoing it they will find like you are not interested in taking care of them you want to be an angelic face but it never stopped me from using it because i very soon realized that people started looking at me especially the opposite sex i started wearing makeup that started with primer all the way to the concealer the foundation the blush the bronzer the setting powder the smoothing powder the talcum powder whatever powder you name it i had it i knew it was power um that was about makeup you know of course lips i would always be nude i i did wear lipstick but i was not a fan of dark lips it was always natural i liked natural beauty so it was something that would always accentuate earth color you know earth tones or nude colors it would never be bright red or something it would be always natural colors because i wanted people to feel like i was naturally pretty i did not have to do anything extra but i'll tell you deep what jesus saw and what jesus felt so how what happened with nails you know we never did our nails in india but when one day when i was in the emergency department i was an er nurse and when I was, uh, you know, when they bring the EMS or the EMT brings in patients, so there was this very handsome, extremely handsome EMT guy. He came and he gave me the paperwork. And you know, the nurses have to sign saying that they've received the patient. So I took the documents, I placed it on a table, you know, a desk, and I put my hand just like this, like I put my hand like this over the, over the paperwork that he gave. And I started signing. And you know, and when he, when I was, when I held the paperwork just like this, like my hands on the page, you know, um, this handsome young man said, 
girl you are very pretty you know that right and i just blushed you know but he said why don't you do anything about those nails those nails look so simple and i was like what do you just notice me he was somebody that all the other white and black girls would would have they had a crush on him because he was really good looking young man so when he said that to me i was like he noticed me first of all and then he said why don't you do anything on your nails and he said wow so if i do that maybe i will be just just knock out right so so i started asking people so what do people do they said girl we in america we have everything they said we have nail salons they do manicure and pedicure i've never even heard the word manicure and pedicure in india and i said what do they do they said they just do your nails so when i first started going they just they said i said i don't want no color or anything we don't wear color they said child let me just clean it so they just started cleaning buffing they said we're just trying to get the dead skin off and all of that made me feel so good you know this foot massage they give you i enjoyed it and they said how about this we just apply very clear base coat on it you will not even see that there is nail pain i said okay that works i don't want to see color but just simple things they said yeah so it started with simple then it uh then i said you know what i want to have long nails but i don't want to wear fake nails they said oh no we have this shellac nails that is like kind of fake but it's actually it just looks so natural so i went and got french nails those of you don't know what french nails is google it and i got french nails that looked natural but very pretty and i was like wow i really i really started liking then slowly i said maybe i should wear some natural colors you know because everybody's wearing so natural colors i don't want dark colors just natural colors so it went into something called as natural colors a lot of malayali pentecostal girls are wearing natural colors because they think it's okay and you know nobody corrected and nobody said anything so i said it must be it must be okay so and then it went into sparkle colors i said maybe that natural colors if they have like small sparkles it'll be perfect isn't it man is never satisfied never no matter how much ever you do for yourself you will always want something more man is never satisfied so that's how the nail story began um let me tell you something about clothes now in america naturally your neck is deep uh you know you're you you wear deep necks and i'll show you the picture the next time i i i'm talking to you guys my clothes had a natural naturally deep neck not too deep because i did not there was a limit that i would always go to i would not cross it but i would just just a little tease kind of thing you know and so necks were naturally deep and i said this is how they made it you know that's how, this is america they don't wear they don't make indian or asian clothes they don't they don't make modest clothes here all the necks are deep here so this is the this is one of the better ones actually so i always defended um my scrubs you know i had to wear uniform at work so my scrubs i made sure and i was only what 119 18 pounds that was like i was very skinny very skinny but at the same time i had figure i was very curvy too so it accentuated my figure i i wore clothes that was tight fitting not too tight fitting but tight fitting to accentuate my curves i would wear trousers or pants that would i knew kind of accentuated my curves my behind i should say or the shirts were long but not long enough to cover my behind or my front area but i was skinny i was i didn't have big thighs i what is there to what is there to hide right you know what is there to hide i i i am perfect i was the envy of people because i had that shape i had that figure um, all men looked at me they couldn't stop praising me almost worshiping me men started calling me goddess and this and that and i was starting to enjoy the hatred that i found in india was all reversed was starting to get reversed in america and i started enjoying that freedom i started enjoying that time my hair so i talked about uh, makeup i talked about nails i talked about clothes oh another thing you know the girl who never wore trousers or pants suddenly started wearing pants you know because everybody's wearing even christians are wearing i don't see anybody saying you know anything about trousers so yeah next is hair 
I had very short hair in India. Though I had long hair, I was so ashamed of it. Then I got so angry and I cut off all the hair and it was so short like a like a like a boy. And then but in, in but when I came to US, everybody started saying, "You are Indian. Do you know your your hair has makes money? Indian hair, Peruvian hair, all of these hairs." have money i would pay you one of the girls told me to make some wig wig hair of your hair and i said my hair they said girl grow your hair you would look rocking i said yeah i am going to grow my hair and i started growing my hair and i hated it i hated my hair because it's not white enough to be straight or asian enough to be straight and it is not black enough to be kinky as well it is wavy we just are not happy. We just are not satisfied with what God gave us. So I was like, I don't like wavy hair. So one of the other friends said, girl, we have hair salons. We make money off this. Go to a hair salon and let the girls tell you what to do with your hair. And these girls, you know, deep conditioned my hair, shampooed my hair, styled my hair and straightened my hair. So my hair grew longer because when they straightened it, the waviness went away and it became so straight. And I said, oh my good Lord, I do look fine now. So, you know, I started wearing my hair straight. I started blow drying my hair and wearing my hair straight. And I loved it. People would stop and touch my hair at Walmart or in the mall because it was silky, smooth, long, luscious hair. And, and it was all the way to my hips, you know, and I made sure that my hair was always like that. You know how many hours I spent to care, taking care of my hair? I would deep condition it certain days and then wash it, shampoo it, blow dry it, style it. I would do whatever I want to do it. Oh, and then somebody said, you need to get some highlights because that will make you really pretty with that long hair. And I started coloring my hair, something that I never thought about. So when I started, I started with simple colors like browns, deep browns. You cannot even say that my hair was colored. I just did not want to look Indian. I just did not want to look like normal Indian girls. I wanted to stand out. I wanted to look different. And I colored my hair. Then people that said naturally your hair. Well, my hair is kind of like that is what I would say. I did not want to say no. <laughs> I would say it's kind of like that, something like that. So, you know, the devil is a master deceiver. If we fall into his tra uh, trap or to fall into his tricks, he's going to bait us and pull us and pull us and pull us even more deeper. And then I started finding some gray hair. I said, uh-uh. No gray hairs, no ma'am. Nobody's going to call me old. I will make sure that those hairs go away. I started coloring even more. Sometimes I would apply henna. Henna is mehendi, they say in Indian language, you know, or, uh, you know, henna, deep henna, deep color henna. And I started wearing those henna as well because I wanted that, love that natural deep brown color on the hair. Um, I started uh, wearing those, one of the prophetess, told me it was revealed to her she said so you have migraines and the lord is revealing it's because of henna so yeah whatever you know i didn't pay attention but now i regret it so bad i will tell you what the lord jesus said so don't go just stay with me you know so that was my story about hair you know we really i really did not have to do attachments or anything i've thought many times of getting attachments just because i loved um uh, kinky hair and curly hair and you know all of those so I really thought about that but never got a chance to do it and the good Lord did not allow me to do it that's that's the truth well, that's about hair let me tell you about jewelry jewelry we really do not wear jewelry like I said our ears are not even pierced you know my dad never got us we don't wear it we don't do it in our culture nose is not pierced most of the Indian girls do have a nose pierced my father and mother are very strict Pentecostals. They did not let us do that. So I was never attracted to jewelry. I did not want to wear earrings or necklaces or bangles, you know, though I always was intrigued by it. And you know, when we did stage shows or dramas, hey, I would wear it just because that was one day I got to wear those jewelry. Again, you know, I never had a problem in other people wearing jewelry. So when in Pentecostal churches, when females came with jewelry on and other ladies would be like, I can't believe she wore some jewelry into the church. 
I was like, what's wrong? Let her live, you know? She just likes to wear it, let her live. Nobody told me or explained to me in depth why we should not be wearing or why, or that the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't approve it. Nobody told me that. And, and, and I was always okay. I said, they like jewelry, they wear it. Even when I got married, you know, my husband put a wedding ring. Though I was like, Ugh, I don't know, my parents don't wear a wedding ring. When he put that, I was like, that's American culture, I don't care. So, you know, I did wear a wedding ring till the Lord Jesus said something else. So, you know, that's about my jewelry, you know, I, I never was interested, but you, I used to wear hair jewelry, like, you know, I would have those designer clips and, you know, that would have like kind of jewelry on it, or even if a dress came with jewelry on it, like a, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, some chains or something, I would never pull it out. I was like, the designer wanted it, it will stay. I'm not going to pull it out. I didn't, I didn't have a problem with it. So like I said, makeup does give you power. Makeup does give you strength. Makeup does give you, uh, you know, that, that, that appreciation that nobody gave you. I suddenly started seeing that a lot of doctors and, and, and anesthetists started paying me attention. I started seeing that a lot of officers, we worked with officers, male officers started paying me attention. Y'all, I was so rebellious. I was so arrogant. I would speed on the road. And when an officer, a male officer would come and stop me, I would just lower the uh, car's glass and I would just bat my eyelids and smile at him. And he would be like, wow. He would be, he would look at all the vanity that was there and he would be like, wow, just watch your speed, young lady. And they would just let me go. They would never give me a ticket, never give me a ticket. No matter what officer, uh, you know, uh, had me speeding they would not give me a ticket because I made sure that I would I would smile at them because somebody told me you need to smile at men you know you would you will make them fall you know that was all demonic that was all demonic nobody told me that uh, somebody else told me you know you sure you are in the right profession you're not supposed to be a nurse you're supposed to be a model look at you you are drop dead gorgeous what are you doing here and these were people who are in higher positions like you know um, doctors and anesthetists would tell me you know you know you can go for modeling right they even got me contracts to sign up for modeling man nobody could tell me nothing I was the ish of the town they just uh, they they just you know um, they just were mesmerized. I'll stop it right here and I'll come back and tell you what the Lord Jesus said. Um, I love you all. Till next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.